So why would you want to deploy a Kubo IPFS node to the cloud? Well, the IPFS network is a large network that is open and is an opt-in network that anyone can participate in. However, there's a common misconception that if you add something to IPFS, it'll just be magically hosted for you. This is not actually the case. While there are many pinning services that will uh, give you some free hosting for your files, they actually have to run infrastructure like IPFS nodes so that they're made available. Now, of course, you can run an IPFS node locally on your machine. However, your machine is likely not to be continuously online making those files and blocks and SIDs available continuously. So by running a Kubo node that is continuously running in the cloud, you can actually ensure the reliability and the availability of your SIDs. There are two more reasons why you might want to deploy an IPFS Kubo node to fly.io. The first is that you get an IPFS gateway, and that means that you can fetch all of the SIDs that are pinned to that node immediately via HTTP, and any arbitrary SID that is available through the network via that gateway. Finally, the last reason is that when you deploy to fly.io, you automatically get a TLS certificate. And one of the benefits of having a TLS certificate is that you can connect to it from the browser using WebSockets. These days, most uh, apps and web apps are running on HTTPS, which means that due to the secure context of the browser, you can only establish WebSocket connections to servers that have a TLS certificate. Now, most of the Kubo nodes or the IPFS nodes in the network don't actually have a TLS certificate. So by having a node that has a TLS certificate, you can actually connect to it using JS IPFS. One final note to make here is that if you're using a pinning service like Web3 Storage, NFT Storage, uh, Filebase, or Pinata, you're essentially delegating the responsibility of running and operating an IPFS node to a service provider. So you have that choice to make. You can run a node or you can use a pinning service and essentially they're running the IPFS node for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Kubo node to fly.io. Fly.io is a platform that makes it really easy to deploy containers to the cloud. And so for this purpose, we're going to use the official Kubo Docker image. We're gonna customize it a little bit in order to be able to apply custom configuration. There are three things you need in order to do this. You need to have the GitHub repository cloned. You can find the repository in the video description, you need to have a Fly account and you need to be also logged in with the Fly CTL, that is the uh, CLI command for Fly for interacting um, with the Fly platform. And you can find instructions for that in the fly.io documentation. So let's get right in. The first command we're going to run is this fly launch with the copy config. Copy config is actually going to look at this fly.toml that is already in the repository and we'll use it in order to configure the application from a high level. Most of this configuration is about setting a couple of environment variables and also opening up a bunch of ports. Uh, you, we need the uh, 4001 both on TCP and UDP. Um, these are the ports that are going to be used by Kubo for peer-to-peer -peer communication. And uh, there's also port 8080, which is the gateway port. Um, port 5001 is actually not open. And the reason for that is that we don't want to expose the Kubo RPC API uh, publicly. We only want that to be available um, in a protected manner. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do that using proxying um, whenever you want to interact with the API. So I'm going to go ahead and write this, uh, launch this command. It's asking me for uh, an app name. I'm just going to call this my IPFS node. And it's asking me for the region. I'm going to deploy that in Frankfurt, which is close to me. We do not want to send uh, to set up a Postgres database. And we also don't want to deploy it just yet. The reason is that we need to create a volume. And uh, you might see this here. So inside the uh, mounts um, in the fly toml, uh, we have this IPFS data. This is a volume that we need to create. And the command for this is also inside the readme. Um, and so I'm going to create this. And as you can see, IPFS underscore data is the same name that I'm using inside the mount section of the fly toml. 
So I'll create that, and that obviously should be in the same region as the app, which is Frankfurt in my case. And now that we've created uh, the uh, volume, we can actually uh, go ahead and deploy. But before that, there's another thing that we need to do. And that is we need to actually update the uh, IP uh, version 4 that is uh, announced by the node. And uh, the reason that we need to do this sort of manually, so to say, is because the container itself, um, Kubo isn't actually, doesn't have inside the container uh, an interface with that uh, IP. It's actually sort of happening through a load balancer. And so this needs to be configured manually. Again, the instructions are uh, inside the uh, readme, but basically we need to look at the IPs and list them. We're gonna see two. Okay, oh, so because the app hasn't been deployed yet, we don't have the IPs, so indeed we do need to deploy the app. One thing to note here is that Kubo cannot be scaled horizontally in the sense that you can't just launch more instances of it. So just be aware of that. It's not like traditional sort of stateless applications that you can just sort of scale them by launching more instances of them. This is gonna do two things. This is gonna actually build the Docker image and we have the Docker file inside the repository. So as you can see, this is just building on top of the official Docker image and it's just adding this IPFS config shell. IPFS config shell, this is the extra sort of customization layer where you can add any necessary configuration. Um, and as I mentioned, this IPv4 that we need to add into the configuration, this is gonna be added in this last line here uh, into the addresses dot append announce. Um, and this will actually publish when sort of the Kubo node publishes its IPs to the DHT. It will also uh, publish this IPv4 that we're gonna add. So now that uh, our uh, container has been deployed, I can open up another terminal and I'm gonna go into the same uh, folder. It was the IPFS deploy fly IO and I'm gonna try to run fly IPs list and we already have it. So here we have the uh, IPv4 and as you can see, it was created 27 seconds ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that here, uncomment this line. And because this IPFS config file is actually added into the Docker image, we're gonna to need to deploy it again. When we do a deploy, it will rebuild the image. So we can run, go back to the uh, original tab and uh, run fly deploy. One thing that's also worth doing is probably scaling um, the container, scaling the memory. I think by default it's uh, getting 256 megabytes. Um, and so I'm gonna scale that to uh, 512 fly apps list. By the way, we can see here that we have this IPFS. If we go just to fly logs, we can actually see the logs running. So there we have it. Um, so uh, next we want to know what's the actual host name for this. And by default, fly will actually uh, link a host name that it has with a certificate. So Let's take a look at that. We can use the dashboard. And if I open up the dashboard, then we can see here, indeed we have uh, the two IPs. One is an IPv6 and an IPv4. And we also have the host name. Now, if I go to this host name, I can see that it's not found, but if I go slash IPFS and I enter a uh, SID, I will be able to fetch it. So I'm just gonna find a SID that I always have pinned. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the gateway that we just deployed as part of Kubo. Um, and I was able to fetch this image. So there we have it. Um, that's the gateway working. Now, of course you can assign additional host names if you want, um, but you're gonna have to sort of mess there with the certificates and so on. Um, and uh, the next thing that we wanna look at is how to use the API. So we have this 
Kubo RPC API. And this is usually uh, the kind of thing that is protected that you don't expose to the public. And so there's sort of two ways to, to, to get into it. The one is to just use uh, the um, SSH console and that's essentially SSHing into the container and then I can run IPFS ID. And as you can see, uh, I have you know the, the node ID. And so if I go into Swarm peers, I can see all the different peers. And we can see that it has 378 uh, peers that are connected to. The second approach to uh, interacting with the uh, Kubo RPC API is using a CLI that is running locally on your machine and then just pointing it to the RPC API. And for that, we're going to use the fly proxy command. So the fly proxy command basically allows you to map a local port to a remote port. And once that's been established, then I can uh, use, for example, the uh, IPFS ID command. And using the dash dash API, I'm going to pass a multi address and that will essentially connect to the remote host. And we can see that because it's running in Docker and I don't have Docker running locally. And also the uh, node ID seems to be uh, different from my local ones. You can also add files using the proxy. So for example, here, I'm going to add a file and it's uploading it over HTTP. And uh, there we have it. We've got the uh, seed returned. One final thing that you can do with the proxying is you can also open up the web UI for IPFS. So here you can see the status of the node. You can also look at the number of peers and you can also add files directly using MFS. This is mutable file system. Uh, so you can add that using the UI. To summarize what we just did, we cloned the repository. We then created a fly app using the configuration uh, inside the repository, inside the fly.toml. We created a volume and then we deployed the app. And then once we deployed Kubo, we also went ahead and updated inside the IPFS-config shell script. We added some custom configuration. Now, at this point, it's worth noting that you can add any sort of custom configuration. For example, I have hole punching disabled. However, I could uh, enable it and then just run fly deploy again and that will uh, restart the container. We will rebuild the image with the new init script, which will reconfigure um, IPFS. And so you have the full flexibility of configuring it as you need. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, so good luck and enjoy deploying.